Welcome back. I'm Sean Wildermuth. As I'm getting ready for the .NET 8 release, I'm running into some new things that I want to play with. And today is no exception. Today I want to talk about keyed services. But first, if you like this content, please like and subscribe, just like everyone tells you. It really does help. Alternatively, you can go watch my Pluralsight courses, because that is a way that I make my living, and it would really help me if you watch some of those. There's a new course on building an ASP.NET app end-to-end -end using .NET 6, and it'll be updated to .NET 8 in the next few weeks. But on to our subject. As .NET 8 approaches, I'm looking at a lot of these features and seeing how they're going to change. I have some clients that are asking me to help them upgrade to .NET 8, and we're running into problems, and so you're going to see a slew of these .NET videos. Most of them are going to be kind of on the short end. But I want you to see what's coming and see the changes that might affect your own projects. Let's get started. So I have an example here using some new things in the dependency injection layer. And the code I have written here, really simple. This is all the code in the entire project. Uh, I have a singleton I'm using to get a name. And I'm giving it an interface. And then I'm giving it an instance that I'm going to actually use for that interface. Pretty simple. This could be transient as well, where it's going to construct this for me, whatever the case may be. But those singletons a bit better of an example. And you can just see there's an interface and there's a name that just implements the interface. Super, super simple. And so I'm asking it to inject the iName so that I can then just return it when we call that. So if we run the project, and I have a little test HTTP file here, should be able to send the request. It gets back Sean. Not a big deal, right? Even is returning it as text plain. But what if I have multiple different services that need the same thing? Now, this is a contrived example, but you might see how it could apply to the kinds of things you want to do. So one of the things you can do here is instead of adding a singleton, you can add a keyed singleton. What does that mean? That means I have an I name here, but I'm going to give it a magic string that is going to be the key for this instance. And so I'm going to say CEO in this case, right? And I might have another, let me just copy and paste there, for the VP, and my VP is Bob, right? So I have the same interface. I don't have to create ones that are special for, this, for these different instances, but if I wanted to go ahead and have two APIs or, or whatever dependency injection you need, I can say I name here, but what I'll need to do is say from keyed services, CEO. I'll need to do the same thing down here for VP. So I'm still telling it the type I want here. I'm just saying go get the version of it that has this key so that we can use it in multiple places. So let's run it again. And over in our test, let's create a, another one of these for VP, right? So when I get the CEO, I'm still going to get Sean. Good day. Let me make it bigger now. And when I do the same thing for VP, I'm going to get Bob. Same interface, but I'm allowed to do this. And this is the same for all the different kinds. So instead of singleton, this could be transient as well. But of course, I wouldn't be passing in a single instance here. I'd have to have something else to define it. And so you might think... CEO name if I wanted to actually have a transient that was separate, right? I could have a class that represents that CEO name that implements this interface that is specific to this because I want to deal with the interface. And when I register more than one, I need to have a way to get them in some known way. And these keyed dependencies are a way to do that. You'll also see if you need to get these manually, I could do the same by injecting a I service provider and I could say the name equals services dot get keyed service just like you would call get service so this would be the equivalent of using it here in the attribute right both of those work in exactly the same way 
So now that we're getting to later versions of .NET Core, like .NET 8, you're going to see some of the features that are coming are more niche. They're not going to be used in every project because the ecosystem that we have right now is pretty broad. And so you might see using something like a keyed singleton or a keyed dependency in only a couple of places in any large project. I want to think of this as the new way to handle it. You don't want to be using keys to get these, but there are the edge cases where instead of going around dependency injection and lifetime management that the services inside of ASP.NET Core support, that this is going to allow you to handle those really edge cases. Thanks for joining me. This is another coding short. My name is Sean Wildemuth. I'll see you next time.